Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about rejection sensitive dysphoria, or RSD, which is very common. And I think you'll be surprised how many mental illnesses it is linked to. And stick around because we are going to dig into what it is, what it can look and feel like, and how we can better manage the symptoms. Obviously, no one enjoys being rejected. It's upsetting and can be emotionally painful. But most of us are able to recover from rejection fairly quickly without having it affect our other relationships or our mental health. We can lean on friends and family and our stockpile of resilience to help get us through. But not everyone is able to bounce back like that. And many experience what is called rejection-sensitive dysphoria which is an intense emotional reaction to any real or perceived rejection. RSD can happen as a result of someone criticizing us, but it can also occur when we fail to meet our own expectations or feel like we have fallen short of one of our goals. Any shortcoming pointed out by ourselves or someone else feels extremely painful and can cause us to lash out or shut down completely. The symptoms we may experience are all dependent on whether we are internalizing or externalizing the pain that we feel, and this may differ from one situation to another. If we externalize this dysphoria, we can lash out in a rage at those who have said or done hurtful things. In a way, because we feel so hurt or vulnerable, we puffer fish to the max to keep people away and help us feel safe and okay again. We can also seek revenge on those who have caused us that pain. And on the flip side, if we internalize the upset, we can feel anxious, depressed, hopeless, and even suicidal. Many with RSD talk about feeling a lot of shame for all the people that they have let down or even humiliated that they've even let it happen at all. And because interacting with people is one of the main ways that we can feel or experience rejection, those of us with RSD can struggle to go out at all or meet with anyone, preferring to stay home alone because it's technically safer, which can lead to a misdiagnosis of social phobia or social anxiety, as well as depression, and in some cases, even agoraphobia. If we are forced to be out of our home and in social situations a lot because of our work or maybe our family, we can become people pleasers as a way to try and minimize the likelihood that someone will reject us in any way. In one article I read, they mentioned that this constant people pleasing can lead to us putting on a show for others, acting in a way that we think they will like and admire. But because we fear rejection so intensely, we can find ourselves putting on this show all day, every day, and end up losing a sense of ourselves, like what it is we like and don't like. We only know how to make sure everyone else is happy so that we don't experience any feelings of rejection. As a result of our RSD, we can also refrain from trying new things for the fear that we will fail or let someone down or not be able to complete the task. This can affect our ability to move up at work, start a new relationship, try a new sport, or learn anything new that can't be learned solo. If it could make us vulnerable to critique or possible failure, we will find ourselves avoiding it at all costs. RSD has been linked to ADHD, OCD, childhood trauma, eating disorders, anxiety, depression, and autism spectrum disorder, just to name a few. And there are some hypotheses about why that is, many tying the sensitivity to hurtful messages we received as children, not feeling like we fit in or that we were good in school. And when it comes to abuse, we know how that can erode at our self-worth, make us hypervigilant to our environment, which is easily connected to some of the symptoms of RSD. And you might be wondering, how is this any different from BPD, otherwise known as Borderline Personality Disorder, or depression, since many of the symptoms are the same? Well, the main differentiator is that RSD always has a trigger, feeling rejected in some way. And the episodes of our anger and upset usually resolve within a few hours. 
whereas depression lasts for at least two weeks, and BPD doesn't resolve that quickly either. It can kind of go up and down one week or a couple days at a time. Whatever the cause or link, let's dive into ways that we can better manage the symptoms because it's extremely upsetting and it can affect our ability to do the things we need to do each day. And when it comes to therapy, the best options available are CBT and DBT, otherwise known as Cognitive Behavioral Therapy and Dialectical Behavior Therapy. CBT works because it will help us recognize some of our unhelpful and downright negative thought patterns, can also dig into our beliefs and work with us to change them. And if you think about it, RSD thrives on the belief that we aren't good enough, that people don't like us, and we won't get or do better. If we can notice those thoughts and fight like hell to get them into a more balanced place, the intense emotional upset that we may be feeling will lessen little by little. Some of the CBT tools that can help are thought tracking, because we can't change them if we don't first know what they are, and two, playing it out to the end, meaning that if we think through an entire situation or event and consider the worst case scenario, then the best case scenario, and finally, the most likely one, I know this can feel tedious, but it helps us check our facts and possibilities, and it stops our brain from always assuming the worst. Now, DBT takes all of that one step further by also offering some emotion regulation skills. One hugely impactful tool is taking care of our basic needs so that we aren't as vulnerable to our emotions. This means that we use the HALT acronym checking in to see if we are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Also considering the story of our emotions. Where did it come from? What triggered it? Where was I and what time was it? What was my action urge? Like, do I wanna lash out, stuff it down? What emotion was I feeling? Doing this can slow things down and help us look back on past upsets and hopefully better understand them so that we can possibly choose to act differently next time. I know therapy work is hard, but I'm telling you it's the best way to make lasting change in your life. However, when I was researching this, and don't worry, I've linked all articles that I read and use in the description down below. But anyways, many of the psychiatrists in those research articles talked about the effectiveness of two medications that were actually created to help lower our blood pressure but they have seen them be successfully utilized to help those of us with RSD symptoms. And those two medications are, number one, guanfacine or Intuniv, and clonidine or Capfe. I might be saying those wrong, but just know that there are other options out there since therapy can take some time. And of course, please consult your doctor before considering any medication changes and ask them any and all questions you have about the medication so that you can decide if it's the right treatment for you. I hope you found this helpful. It was really interesting to look into this, but if you have other experiences or thoughts about rejection-sensitive dysphoria, please leave those in the comments down below, and I will see you next time. Bye.